Hey guys, you're watching BTEX, I'm Basil. Today we're going to talk about the Xperia XZ Premium and Lemonade. Yep, you heard right. I'm gonna run through how I found the phone after 12 to 15 hours of usage. And I'm also gonna teach you the science of how to make lemonade with just three ingredients and water. That's fizzy lemonade, not still lemonade. And I'm gonna do it with the help of the XZ Premium's 960 frame per second slow-mo. So while I'd be really cheeky calling this a review, it is not a review. It is still a very in-depth first impression at a pre-production sample of the XZ Premium. In order to make one pint of lemonade to test out the slow-mo, we're gonna need two lemons, as well as a little bit of sugar and some bicarbonate of soda. As for the XZ Premium, it's got a 5.5 inch 4K display, HDR tech under the hood as well, stereo front firing speakers, one gigabit download speeds as well, which will be supported in the UK by EE, and that 960 frame per second slow-mo. And if you're in the UK, that is the first phone that is gonna drop with that insane slow-mo, owing to the new imaging processor and sensor on the new XZ range. So I'm gonna compare the XZ Premium's 960 frames per second with the Huawei P10 Plus's 120 frames per second at just the moment that all the lemonade starts fizzing. If I stop here, I've basically got homemade still lemonade. How do I make it fizzy? Easy, add bicarbonate of soda. When you add a base bicarbonate of soda to an acid, lemon juice, then you get a reaction. And that reaction is fizz. So it instantly starts fizzing. This is the same kind of reaction that you get when you have one of those vitamin tablets and you plonk it into water. The liquid brings together the base and the acid and creates gas. And so now we have got carbonated lemonade. So that was how you make lemonade at 30 frames per second. But how about at 960 frames per second? While the Huawei P10 Plus slows everything down consistently across the entire recording duration, the Xperia XZ Premium only slows it down momentarily when you hit the slow down button because 960 frames per second is so much, you wouldn't be able to consistently have that. Otherwise you'd basically have time standing still constantly and the sensor would probably fry. This means that other phones may be a little bit more reliable at capturing that slow-mo that you might actually miss if you just miss pressing the button at the right time. But the Xperia XZ Premium is much, much better for really dramatizing shots, especially with things like punching hands in sand and water effects and stuff like that. One thing I will say though, the XZ Premium's line 60 frames per second does make it way, way worse in low light than its regular shooting mode. So it's definitely one for out doors on a beautiful sunny day just like we had for our lemonade test shoot. You've got a 5.5 inch screen on the phone and there's a fair bit of bezel going on all around it. 68.4% screen to bezel ratio so nowhere near the 84% of the Samsung Galaxy S8. That said, you do have a pixel density of 807 pixels per inch and Gorilla Glass 5, as well as that HDR video support. Outdoor viewability looks great in the sun. Saturation was pretty on point. Although when there's really, really bright sunlight, there's a weird dot matrix on the display that is super, super evident. It looks like a blown up XZ or XZS, except for that shiny, shiny back and pretty heavy chamfering at the top and bottom, which just adds an even more premium factor to the phone. 195 grams, this is not a light phone. It's solid, it feels well weighted in the hand, but it isn't too thick, under eight millimeters at 7.9. Running Android Nougat with Sony's custom UI over the top, this thing should perform very, very well. Like I said, I had a pre-production unit and I didn't find there was any slowdown, any stutter, and that isn't surprising because you've got a Snapdragon 835 under the hood of this thing paired with four gigabytes of RAM. Like I said, that Snapdragon 835 is it's gonna enable one gigabit download speeds, but more than that, it's gonna enable incredibly fast day-to-day -day action and fantastical gaming, which I anticipate should look phenomenal on that 4K display. 
There's 64 gigabytes of storage on here, so there should be loads of room for all your movies and videos and everything, as well as micro SD expandability, which is great. What that also means is that 4K video that you capture on the rear camera won't only look good, you'll have plenty of room to store it. Speaking of the rear camera, it's a 19 megapixel snapper, so it's lower resolution than its predecessor. You've got nice wide open F2 lens and bigger physical pixels, so it should perform better in low light, even though with a super, super slow mode, like I said, that low light performance was hampered. Regular image performance will be good. 13 megapixel front camera as well. Battery size is 3,230 milliamps. So not the biggest battery out there, but hopefully Sony's optimized it really well so that we can get at least a full day of usage. In my time with it, I was setting up all the applications, downloading all my apps, etc. Tried to download Antutu guys because it was pre-production, it wouldn't let me. Sorry, I can't give you any benchmarks. But what I can say is it seemed to perform fairly, but my time was too short with it to give you anything conclusive. So stay tuned for the full review which will be coming. As far as when you can get your hands on one, the XZ Premium should drop in time for summer, which is pretty handy because now you know how to make your own summertime lemonade to be drinking in one hand while you're playing with the XZ Premium in another. Key highlights, that screen, that design, and that user interface just seemed like it was absolutely flying, even though I didn't even have final production software on the version I was using. As for things I would have liked to have seen, a better screen to bezel ratio. If this thing had like the same physical chassis size, but a 5.8 or six inch screen, that would have blown my mind. On top of that, it wouldn't have been a bad thing to have seen a bigger physical capacity battery on here, but, 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 the Samsung Samsung Galaxy S8 has a smaller battery and a bigger screen, 3000 milliamps, 5.8 inches, and still manages to last full day. So there is every hope here that the Xperia XZ Premium does just that. So now you know a little bit more about the XZ Premium than you did before, and you know how to make anything that's a little bit acidic, such as lemon juice, fizzy by just adding some bicarbonate of soda. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, click that thumbs up button. If you like the channel, subscribe. It's how you'll stay on top of everything that we do. Thanks for watching BTEX.